What's up, guys? Our good friends from Game Time are back with the channel, and we're so excited about it. And hey, what a time for them to come back on, and what a time for us to have a Game Time offer for you, because right now, the baseball season is in full effect. And who doesn't love enjoying America's game? Well, with the Game Time app, you can enjoy America's game and save money while doing it. So go to the Game Time app right now. Sign up using my promo code DCTV. We'll give you $20 off of your first purchase. Now, it is baseball season and we all love baseball, but Game Time is not limited to just baseball. You can do anything, concerts, comedy shows, basketball, mixed martial arts, get tickets to anything by using the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. Download it right now, create an account, Use my promo code DCTV for $20 off of your first purchase. Again, guys, go and download the Game Time app. Use my promo code DCTV when you create an account, and we'll give you $20 off of your first purchase. Welcome back, Game Time. We love you guys. We've missed you. What's up, guys? I'm back with a brand new episode on DCTV. Hey, that's a good name. That wasn't my idea, but you pay people to have good ideas so that you look good in front of you people. Anyhow, as I was getting ready for this new episode, I was thinking to myself, what do I talk about? Because Ben and I spoke about Jones. We talked about Connor saying Donald Trump losing the presidency because he said Khabib is his favorite fighter. There were so many great moments in that episode. Guys, if you haven't watched it, go and check it out. It was hilarious. But what I was thinking was Bilal Muhammad and Kamaru Usman are now chirping. You know, when I sat down with Bilal in Manchester, he told me people just don't want to like him. And he didn't quite understand why. I'm just a normal guy that outworks everybody. I'm a normal guy that started late in my career and did it all the hard route. And people just don't respect that. But I'm the blue collar guy. But wouldn't you think that would make people want to respect you more? We're in a new day and age, right? You got to be outlandish. You got to say stupid stuff. You got to be flashy. People gotta... just weren't really vibing with him because he, ha he really doesn't do much wrong. But I don't know if his personality is what people kind of tap into. Probably until now. I will say this. Bilal Muhammad went and fought Leon Edwards and beat Leon Edwards, and he has been an absolute menace since he beat Leon Edwards. He is talking trash about everybody. Hey, you know what was kind of crazy about Bilal Muhammad? When he said, if he beats Leon Edwards, he's on the same level as this guy, this guy, this guy. And then the coach said he's got boxing like Canelo and all. We all laughed at him. And then he went out there and he actually fought like that. Shit was crazy to see. But in terms of him being a menace, he's just been attacking dudes. And now he got Kamaru Usman on the mind. So a little bit of backstory. Malal Muhammad, Kamaru Usman are both managed by Ali Abdelaziz. They're both in the same circle. They have both been in the same space on many, many occasions when Kamaru Usman was the champion, Bilal Muhammad was the guy that was trying to work his way up. I don't know that Usman ever gave it a thought that he would fight Bilal Muhammad. But Bilal Muhammad, and we have seen this time and time again, guys, especially when it's not a teammate situation, right? There's close ties, but you aren't tied in a way that would make you say, I don't want to fight this guy. I bet during Usman's reign, Muhammad was watching and going, okay, I bet I can beat this dude. Because that's the only way that it turns into what it's turned into as fast as it's turned into what it's turned into. So for the record, what I'm talking about, is Kamar Usman and Bilal Muhammad are going back and forth. The latest thing was said was Usman was trying to not really speak about what happened between him and Leon Edwards in regards to what Bilal did to Leon. But Bilal kept going. 
So finally, the last thing said, Kamaru just finally said, I'm done. I'm going to speak my part. He said, okay, enough of Mr. Nice Guy. You were never chasing me, bum. You were barely in the rankings when I dominated the, light, the, the division. For your information, I have a win over Leon. Son, I, I've beaten Leon too, is what Kamaru's telling Bilal because Bilal's like, well, you lost to Leon Edwards. And wouldn't it become such a bad thing to lose to Leon Edwards? It's not really bad because Leon Edwards is an absolute dog. So then Bilal said, dominated division. You beat Masvidal twice. You went to cardio kickboxing war with Colby Covington. And he put in parentheses, Colby sucks. You're protected by the UFC. Now you can barely walk. Your podcast sucks, and your pardon Black Panther sucks too. Dude, what's up with Bilal Muhammad, man? What's up with Bilal Muhammad? If I'm being honest, I like it. Because he's like, I'm the champ. I'm the champ. And he's not really paying respect to anybody right now, which is great because either you love him or you hate him, you're going to kind of tap into what Bilal Muhammad is doing. And when you have that many people in the streets of Manchester after beating a guy from Birmingham, England, which is not that far from Manchester, celebrating you as if you're the man, why wouldn't you feel like you're the best in the world? And why wouldn't you start feeling yourself? And after you beat Leon Edwards in the way that he did, why wouldn't you start feeling yourself? Now, this is one of those situations, though, where Bilal Muhammad is doing exactly what you expect from new champions, but you got to be careful unless that's exactly what you want. Either he wants to fight Kamaru Usman or he's just chirping because by doing what he's doing right now, he may have to fight Kamaru Usman because when you bring a champion back into play who at this point isn't really in contention because of the fights with Leon and because of the fight against Hamzat, you bring him back into play and then the powers that be start going, well, he did go up to 185 on 10 days notice to save a card and fought the guy that's in a number one contenders match very close and if it was a five-round fight, many believe he was going to win. Maybe he does deserve a chance to fight this guy. I mean, there's stuff there. We have seen many fights and rivalries built on the fact that the guys don't like each other. Seriously. We've seen many. We have seen many fighters get title shots that many of you believe were undeserved based on the fact that the champion, they did not like. We have seen people like Alex Pereira, who has gone on to become the man, get a title fight in two UFC fights because he had history with Israel Adesanya. Now, it's not rocket science. When you bring a man's name into play like that, especially a man that carries a lot of reputation, that has cachet, a man that gets people to show up to the arena, you got to be careful because if that's not what you really want, you may end up getting that fight. I saw, I saw some comments, people saying, well, Bilal, why are you trying to call out Kamar Usman? What about Shavkat? Shavkat's a dog. Shavkat's the man. Shavkat's 18-0 with 18 finishes, and he looks like a guy that at some point will hold the UFC championship. Here's the problem. Can Shavkat Rachmanov get people in the door? Can Shavkat Rachmanov get people in the door? Like Kamaru Usman to that, I say no. If I'm being honest with you, I say no. Because he just hasn't had that opportunity to show it against anyone that will elevate him left. He needs a fight with a guy like Leon Edwards, with a guy like Kobe Covington, with a guy like Kamaru Usman that can elevate him to the point that you can say, I know this man will get people to walk through the turnstiles. It's absolutely true. He hasn't had that chance yet. So I don't know that the first title fight needs to be a, between a guy who, if we're being honest, Bilal is just now starting to resonate with fans. He didn't have that before. And another guy who has not crossed over just yet. You always got to have the established star. And guess who that established star is? Kamaru Usman. So while they're going back and forth, and the chirping's fun because we all love that, we got to know 
that that's something that we might be able to tap into because reality is this. It might actually happen anytime there's bad blood. The wins and the losses don't matter as much when there's bad blood. The story is what brings people in. Then it's up to you as the fighter to keep them there. But people see this, their ears perk up. People learn that they have the same management. Their ears perk up. People learn that they're in the same circles or at least traveled in those same circles. The ears perk up. Then you start to look at it and you go, wow, these are two of the best fighters in the world. And I anticipate it's going to just get more and more disrespectful as we go because these two don't really seem to like each other. And what I love most about that is that it seems like it's something that's festered and laid under the surface because it wasn't allowed to show its face. But now that they're saying, mass off, you can see me for who I am, but all you're the champ. I'm Kamaru, I'm the former champ who wants another opportunity. It's starting to kind of show, and I'm all for it. But hey, that boy Bilal Hamid is a menace. He said Black Panther sucks. <laughs> He's tripping. Bilal is tripping. Bilal is tripping. He's absolutely tripping, but I like it. I like that confidence. I like that newfound swagger that he's trying to show. Now, for Usman, he's the man. Tomorrow's the man. He always has been. And if he gets an opportunity, he's going to fight his ass off to try to become the champ again. I'm all for it. But hell, if you tell me that my consolation prize is Shavkat Rachmanov fighting for the UFC championship, I'm the first person buying the ticket. Good days are at the welterweight division right now, guys. And part of it is because you got a new champion who is not holding his tongue for anyone. And I love it. So hats off, Bilal. He's starting to really kick over some rocks. But there's a rock in Kamar Usman that's ready and willing to step up to the fight. So you better make sure that you're ready to handle it. And Ali... <laughs> Good luck, my guy. You got a whole bunch of great fighters. And now it looks like these dudes are about to have to fight each other because that belt comes first. Unbelievable. What a time to be alive. And you know, if you're messy, this is the type of stuff you live for. And the boy DC is messy. So <laughs> let's go. Hey, guys, as always, I love and appreciate every one of you for tapping into my stuff. Always supporting you. Until next time, like, subscribe. Tell your friend to tell a friend that DC's got a YouTube channel. And I'm tapping in. Hey, next week, I got Izzy. I got Drakus. I got Ty. It's going to be a great week for check-ins. So I got all my friends checking into with to my program. And I also do these videos for you with my opinions on the state of mixed martial arts. Till next time, guys. Have a great weekend. Peace. Oh, look at the balloons. Balloons. Again. I don't even know how the, f the balloons come on my screen every time I do that, but it is what it is.